Hello, today we are meeting Gita and Tonkov and we'll be talking about breath work and release techniques. Hello Gita. Hello. Tell us first, tell us where are you from and what do you do here in Poland? Uh, originally I'm from Ukraine. I was born and grew up in Odessa and I left there from in 1987. It's uh, been more than 30 years that I haven't lived there. And uh, what I do here in Poland, I come three times a year to teach biodynamic breathwork and trauma release. And it mm -hmm. happens uh, near Krakow. And it's a course that uh, I'm teaching here in Poland for the past five years, three times a year. Mm -hmm. So how come that you got interested in this topic, actually, in it your life? Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of found me. It's not that I decided that I wanted to be a therapist. I uh, started to, I became actually a massage therapist uh, in at the age 22. And uh, as I was more and more interested in the body and exploring the human body and how to work with it, these are the new modalities that's, that attracted me working with breathing. Mm -hmm. And uh, biodynamic breath work and trauma release evolved out of uh, out of this. Mm -hmm. But you had some kind of trauma in your life that you had to release. You know, it besides the shock trauma which I did have at the age of twelve, being hit by a car and almost dying. There is, as I found later when I was studying this work and trauma release and body-oriented therapy that one of the major uh, traumas that we as human beings experience is developmental trauma. It's something that we all go through as part of our growing up and acquiring different various conditioning from our parents which mm -hmm. they inherited from their own parents. So this is a more it's a focus of my work is a developmental trauma but of course it covers the shock trauma which we all have to some mm -hmm. degree so uh, what you said about uh, parents we can call it birth trauma yeah uh, yes birth trauma is part of it uh, and uh, it, it's uh, it's a conditioning that we acquire growing up to fit in it's mm -hmm. a personality structure that we start to develop because we want to fit in and be loved and be appreciated and be approved. So we develop this uh, idea that I have to behave a certain way mm -hmm. for others to accept me and to receive love. So we kind of forgo our individuality in order to, ex to adapt the personality to fit into this world outside of us and this for many of us is traumatic we learn to behave a certain way and uh, and this brings tension into our physical body and uh, this is what we pretty much work with we let go of the tension that is acquired as we grow up a tension that is related to uh, developing a certain personality pattern mm -hmm. so uh, obviously, you searched for some wonderful method. So, uh, what methods did you come through? Yeah. Before you found your own. I I started as a massage therapist, then I seriously got into yoga, and I, this was my practice for many years. And uh, later in life, I found uh, Indian mystic Osho. And through Osho, I moved deeply, deeply into meditation. And uh, Osho is one of the greatest Zen masters and, and also Tantrika. So mm -hmm. uh, for me, Zen and Tantra has been the path. And uh, I bring in Osho meditation techniques into my courses. And Osho has been a huge inspiration in my life. I am a sannyasin. I have lived in Osho meditation resort in India for at least spent six months out of the year for 10 years and uh, I love that place it has huge influence on the work that I present mm -hmm. okay so after all that you developed your own method 
What is yeah. it all about? Um, the method that I developed evolved out of a combination of body work. It's an integrated me integrative method. It includes um, a few major pillars, six in the matter of fact. So the first one is working with breath. Then we include the supporting elements of touch and body work. Then the next element is movement, which supports opening of the body, utilizing of the, of the energy that we unlock, we release it through movement, which brings in the next method is emotional expression. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of the tension that is stored in the body, in our tissue, starts to release. We release it through movement, we release it through conscious emotional expression. The key word here is conscious. We don't go into deep catharsis. We express in the very short uh, periods of time, short segments, so the person can stay fully, fully connected. Then the, the other two um, pillars of this work is sound. We use sound, which is our voice and also external sound in form of music and instruments to support the body from the outside. And of course, the meditation. And to summarize everything together, to integrate everything together, meditation is uh, by far the most effective method. It supports people to come into understanding of themselves, looking at themselves objectively. So the whole process has the way to integrate with people being fully connected to themselves. So mm -hmm. meditation is, is, is it's kind of, we do everything we open the body, we do all the other uh, steps so the meditation can happen. Mm -hmm. Kind and of clearing, clearing the path for the meditation to arise. And once it is released, it never comes back. Only something from the deeper layers may come. After yes, that. you're absolutely correct. And we open the body layer by layer. We move deeper and deeper and deeper into the core. And of course, there's layers and layers of conditioning we acquire through lifetime. Mm -hmm. So we move through this layer by layer, mo moving down into the deepest layers of tension that we carry. This is where developmental trauma pretty much lives. It's a very deep core. Mm -hmm. And this is the work that, uh, that we do, biodynamic breath work and trauma release. It focuses on releasing this deep core tension. When we do release it, uh, there's a huge space opens up. First of all, our physical body begins to change and we start to drop the personality and come into the individuality. This is the result of this work. Mm -hmm. And we, we all born as individuals until we start to cover it up with ways of behaving that is not essentially ours. So this is the work that, that supports people to come away from this personality structure and come into their individuality. Uh, that's a very interesting topic, topic, personality and individuality. How would you describe the difference? Because uh, for many people it's the same. Yes, they are actually very different things. Persona in personality is something that we acquire. Yeah, it is persona it's, is from Greek mask. Mask, exactly. Sona is sound. It's the sound that's coming behind the mask. So exactly, personality is very different from individuality. Personality is something, like you said, it's a mask. We put on the mask to fit in, to feel safe in the environment that we are, in relating to others. So pretty much majority of the people relates on the level of a personality. Mm -hmm. People don't allow others in because it's, it, they don't feel safe with that. Yeah, people play games. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's a kind of a, a socially accepted games that we all play it on some level. And individuality is something very different. Each one of us is born with an individual until the conditioning starts to happen. Mm -hmm. So the natural talents, the natural abilities, the natural way of relating in freedom, that for me is an individuality. So personality never can be free? Not in my opinion, not. I, I feel that personality is something that, that is acquired. It actually, it's actually given to us, to us by others, therefore it's not truly ours. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
in what areas of life does this work help? It actually helps in in every area of life. Stupid starting with, yeah. starting with the physical body. Uh -huh. We use the physical body. Our physical body is the pathway mm -hmm. for this work, for biodynamic breath work. Uh, we are rooted in the body. So when we work with this approach, our physical body begins to change because uh, the deep core tension and also superficial tension that we carry, the armoring that we develop, it starts to release. And of course, it affects the physical body. We become healthier. The tissue that's, that is, is in contraction releases, therefore the energy flow can, can move freely through the body. So that's number one. The second uh, main um, way that starts to change is the way we relate to ourselves and to others. We learn to see what our patterns in relating were and we actually drop them. It's a conscious decision that we, we face. And the third one is actually we see that, that we have a choice. We can react in the way that we have been out of unconscious behavior or we are faced with a choice. We can go on behaving the way that we have been, which in some way worked for us, it's got us this far, but is it working currently? Mm -hmm. Then we tend to see, is this the way that I want to continue behaving or I want to make some kind of conscious shift? Yeah, act or react? Acting, um, react or respond rather. Mm -hmm. uh, how can we, um, actually, do we practice this method in everyday life? Usually this method is done either in one-on-one -on -one sessions mm -hmm. or in groups, the, w the way that I'm teaching it. But for sure there are some aspects of this method that people can practice at home every day. And the way it can be done is simply by bringing your attention to your breath, starting to breathe deeply and watching your body. The, the, one of the very basic concepts of this work is working with the felt sense, meaning that we are fully present to our physicality. We are feeling what's happening to our physical body without giving it any meaning. So we stay present to our physicality while we're breathing and connected breathing through the mouth is the method, meaning that there is no break between inhalation and exhalation. We breathe in and out through the mouth, discharges the body with energy. So people can do that at home for short periods of time, starting with, let's say, five minutes, setting a timer. I'm breathing for five minutes, I'm watching my body, what happens with with this breath coming in, body starting to charge with energy, using the felt sense, feeling what's happening, and bringing in a movement that begins to arise naturally. When we start to fully breathe, breath is energy, we start mm -hmm. to charge, the movement begins to arise in the body. And this movement has a concept of coming from the core. It radiates from the inside out, meaning that we start to unlock all the areas that are locked in our core, all the tissues that are storing tension. When they start to unlock, this tension results in movement. So for people to stay fully present to this unwinding movement that, that comes from the inside out, that we're not doing it, it's happening on its own. So the step is to allow this movement to happen rather than to control it or giving it a direction. Mm -hmm. So how do you respond to aggression, for example? Aggression is, is a strong energy that comes at me. I'm watching how my body naturally responds to this. We all respond in some way to aggression. Mm -hmm. So again, I have a choice. I can meet aggression with aggression or it, if, it's, if I relax and I allow this, uh, this strong energy to just move without me responding, usually it, it just goes away. Aggression needs aggression to stimulate it. Mm -hmm. If there is no response to it, it just disappears into thin air. So, of course, there would be a natural bodily response, 
and it comes down to choice. Do I follow this natural bodily response? Do I have enough capacity to be with this response and not to react to it? Mm -hmm. And it's not it's not the passive aggressive that you could just block it and then it of course it stimulates the other person because you're not responding. Mm -hmm. But it's it's very different. It's kind of this this passive aggression is like uh, ignorance. Yes, ignoring. Yeah. It's yeah. like ignoring the the aggression, pretending that it doesn't bother you, but inside there's yeah. there's all this turmoil. It it really bothers you, but you are just not pretending. Really, yes, but there's also because of we of the use of the felt sense, you are watching the reaction that your body has, but not really giving it meaning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we come down to this level, it's more of a, um, the, we, we watch the, the, our responses. We watch how big is a container that we have to be with whatever is happening without it spilling over the top. So what we do is, is kind of enlarging this container that anything that happens, you can be with without reacting. That's mm -hmm. like you said, it's a, it's a reaction or a response. Okay, and a uh, very similar question. How do you respond to your thoughts or programs uh, induced by your f thoughts? Let's say I'm going, I'm walking on a sidewalk and I meet someone who did something bad to me like three years ago. And I get angry because I remember this situation. This person doesn't even know anything. So everything happens in my mind. It's not real. It's my illusion, yeah? yeah, and I am tense inside. What then? Again, it all comes down to to looking at yourself objectively. Mm -hmm. What is going on? What do you do with your attention? It it all comes down to your choice. Mm -hmm. Like I, I can come up to this person and yell at yeah, you him, have, and he doesn't know what is going yeah, on. You can unload your attention on somebody; it will make you feel better for a moment. But eventually, it's not going to bring any result. This tension will come up again and again and again. Mm -hmm. The moment you meet this person, this tension will again arise. But it's actually when you're looking at this tension and you, you make a conscious choice to release this tension, not all at once, but release it little by little, so you have a possibility to be actually present without just venting it. Mm -hmm. Be present on how your body responds, how you can release this tension without, without blowing off or, or just dumping it on somebody. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very much looking at yourself objectively, looking at the responses, the physical responses you have. Uh, some people might say, I'm blowing off at that person because I'm expressing my truth. I feel angry, so I, so I need to express. Otherwise, I would pretend that I'm not tense. Yeah. So, what is the truth? This expression or observing? Mm. There are ways to express. Yeah, this, uh, of course, blowing it off at somebody. If you are angry and you're expressing this anger and the other person has no capacity to take it, you will meet again with anger and you will just fuel each other's anger and it will go nowhere. Mm -hmm. But to actually watch how you're feeling angry and find a way to express it in a way that the other will be able to, to hear you. Mm -hmm. This is, it, it all comes down to a way of communicating, uh, to, to express your feelings, to express your emotion without being overtaken by them. Mm -hmm. To, to meet, this is when the real meeting happens. It happens out of vulnerability. Vulnerability is not part of the ego. It's not part of the, of the personality structure. Okay. So when we start to, to drop into this space, you know, I'm feeling angry. And uh, this anger is because of something that happened back then. And, and this is how it makes me feel. It's not because you did this and this and this and now I'm angry at you and I'm pissed and I'm gonna and I'm gonna smack you. Mm -hmm. it, this will not produce any kind of meeting. But again, coming into looking at yourself objectively and, and seeing what the reactions you have, I'm I'm angry, therefore I'm feeling this way. 
mm-hmm. and share this with others, then it's a completely different experience in different meeting. Okay, uh, how long do you do that? For how many years? I um, I started with my body work uh, training at uh, at ninety four. I finished. I became a massage therapist, and I worked for many years in the medical field, medical massage and uh, uh, injury rehabilitation. And uh, I started with um, developing biodynamic breath work about fifteen years ago. Okay. So obviously during those 15 years you had a lot of very interesting cases of healing and other stuff. So please give us a few. Yeah, it, it was actually every time I'm in the workshop, in the training, something interesting happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was one situation where a woman's hearing came back in one ear that she did not hear for 20 years. And uh, she comes out after a session like, well, something is different. It took her some time to really realize what's happening that she could hear from both sides. And Mm -hmm. this was uh, remarkable. And because we work with the body by opening uh, our body level by level. So we work with this area and that something happened that the, the psychosomatic system that she lived with was gone. Mm-hmm. And so the hearing came back. There was another um, situation where somebody could not dance. They they were so they were so conditioned. The woman was so conditioned around her body and movement that for her just shifting her weight from side to side was was the idea of dancing. By the end of the course of a one week course, she was in the middle of a circle, <laughs> really going for it. So it was uh, something really special to see how somebody's uh, perception of themselves changes, and uh, because they let go of this conditioning of the body that they had, our our temple, our anchor is our physical body, but also looking at at the the psychosomatic system which would develop around our body. So many times I've seen in courses that this transformation happens. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a regular thing. Okay, what about uh, diseases like maybe cancer or something something like that? You know, it's very difficult to say that uh, that it's it, it, this is not one cure for for everything, mm-hmm. but it certainly can be part of a person's healing journey that the, don't put your, your faith into one thing. There's not one thing exists in the world that is absolutely complete. Mm-hmm. But it can be part of integrative healing method for somebody who's suffering from cancer or any other uh, diseases that in the body that, that, that potentially could be deadly. So uh, for sure we have seen results in courses mm-hmm. where somebody... I had, that uh, we had last year who had uh, stage four skin cancer. And uh, he came for the training twice and he came to our retreat in Costa Rica. We worked with, uh, with uh, shamanic medicine as well as the breath. And uh, he, the results after came back that there was no tumors. It was quite amazing, but he has done a few, many other things. So this was part of his healing journey is to participate in the course. Mm-hmm. So I can't tell you that this is one method that cures everything, but if for sure it can be a mm-hmm. huge help. Uh, where do you do your courses? A course is happening in many places in the world. Uh, right now they're happening at least three times per year in Poland. They happen twice a year in Bali, twice a year in the United States, in China, in Russia. Uh, in Estonia, in Australia, and uh, I, there's a few people besides me that are teaching the trainings. Okay, so besides this uh, conscious breathing, please give us <coughs> some other easy exercise which we can do at home. Another very easy exercise it, which we use in this work is called myofascial unwinding. It's uh, standing with your feet firmly on the ground, your body is loose and relaxed, and you start to to move your body first very slowly, uh, staying with the concept of the movement radiating from the inside out, 
and you keep this movement traveling through the body so there is no real you're not you're just giving it a slight direction but you're not controlling it mm -hmm. and uh, after a while this movement starts to become bigger and bigger and bigger until some tremoring begins to arise and this tremoring this is part of the fight or flight response which is stuck in the body and wants to come out so bringing in some breath into it and and using this myofascial unwinding very slowly moving um, it's kind of sending a wave up the spine this is a beautiful way to stay connected and use your felt sense and at the same time unlock the core tension mm -hmm. Super. It's, you see that you said the tremoring is like shaking, yeah? From, yeah, from it's inside. a slight shaking that comes from the inside, which is a residual of our of the energy stuck because of the un, unprocessed, uh, uncompleted fight or flight response, which is in, in our body goes through in 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 times of uh, of intense trauma or mm -hmm. intense. Uh, intense events that happen to us. Mm -hmm. Okay, we covered all the planned topics, so maybe some wrap-up sentence, <laughs> something I, final? For me, there would be no better happening than to see everyone fully, fully connected to their physical body, being aware to their physical body, of their physical body and meditating every day, just bringing attention to themselves uh, mm -hmm. for at least some limited time per day or just actually spread it into every task that we do through the day. It's just self-awareness and I want to invite everyone to, to practice that. Super. Thank you for the interview and for your work. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.